Taurus, Sun, Moon, rising in Venus. Welcome. This is Warriors of Light Astro Tarot. I'm David. And we are doing this time your higher self read, I call it, instead of a romantic read. This is looking at the alignment of your higher self, uh, how you're aligning with your soul's path. I want to do this for all signs this week. Uh, we do have the, it's kind of a timeless read, but I'm doing this today on the uh, full moon on Scorpio on the 16th. That's at 25 Scorpio in uh, the north, the uh, nodes at uh, 22 Taurus, and of course the sun's at 25, and then the south nodes at 22 Scorpio. So, and you've got Uranus there, and uh, right at 15 for you guys. So, this is a big energy for you for sure. You're like in the bullseye of all this. And uh, especially with the nodes, um, you know, that's like a 18-year transit, so one and a half years per sign. So if you kind of look back to 2004, you might get some idea of whatever was going on in 2004 in terms of your alignment with your soul's path and your soul's purpose, which is roughly represented by the nodes, um, you know, by their house. If, if you're a Taurus rising, then it's first house to seventh house, so it's on the relationship axis, so you kind of know what that's about. The nodes are generally, as an astrologer, we're going to look more at the house and then at the aspects and the last thing at the signs um, for information there. Like for me, um, it's square my son, so that's pretty important aspect, uh, just as important as the houses my nodes are in. And um, so kind of think about that as we do this reading and uh, think about in terms of how you're aligning for your soul's past. Well, obviously, this is for someone that feels like they're doing, you know, soul work and spiritual work. And you're coming in with the Queen of Wands. And for this reading, I'm going to look at it together with the star card. This does represent here the star. This is the energy of what your higher self kind of wants to convey to you, your mind coming in with the Queen of Wands, and what a dynamic combination, um, so uh, powerful time for you, uh, with the Queen of Wands, that's coming in with a lot of confidence, uh, probably wanting to speak out, maybe uh, leave me a message too, I'd love that in this readings, if, if you, you know, relate to this, you know, and it resonates, but, you know, this could be someone that you're at a point, you have been for a while, uh, where you feel kind of mature in your spiritual life. Um, you're wanting to share it with other people. Um, it's not like a hermit energy where you're internal. And uh, so you're kind of wanting to open up. And, you know, in the Bible they say, don't, you know, hide your candle under a, under a bushel basket. So you've lifted that bushel basket off of your candle and you're letting that light shine, you know, on the whole house, that kind of energy. And with the star card here, it has to very much do with hopes, dreams, wishes, with manifesting. Um, so if you're a manifester, it does speak to that. And it would be just raw encouragement here. Um, and kind of saying to me with the star card that you're in really good alignment, you know, with your higher self. Could even speak to someone that you, you know what your higher purpose is, you know. It sounds crazy, right? Of course you do right now. Not everyone really does. Maybe some people don't even think about it. Uh, or some people wonder, gee, is that really my purpose? I don't really know. I think you kind of know uh, is what that's getting at here. And then when we look at, you know, how your energy is in relation to your higher self with the Ten of Swords combined with the King of Cups, um, it, I, it's some kind of transition with tens, obviously endings. I want to keep going back to that 2004, what was going on then, you know, and how have you grown and changed? Like if you really stop for a second, and really go back 2004, go internal. We're in Mercury, Mercury retrograde. That's all internal. And what was your relationship with, with your own mind? Forget everybody else. And maybe we'll even what who cares what was going on externally in your life. What was going on internally and how has that changed over this last 18, almost 20 years now of time? Um, because that's, I think there's something ending. Um, so the something, something of the way that you used to speak to yourself internally um, now is, is just ending. And I think what's saying with the King of Cups is what you've gained over that time. I would love you to leave me a message. Let me know if I'm on track. 
is what's called emotional intelligence, you know. Um, so it's kind of like moving out of just kind of going around in your mind, thinking about things, and intuiting things, feeling things, uh, becoming aware of emotionally uh, where you're at, being able to be emotionally available, maybe just to yourself, you know. So it's before you would just think about something, maybe now like you're you're feeling something and with the king here you know i feel like that's really mature like you're you've really reached some kind of level here uh with it um and in in this is aligning you with whatever it is you're trying to manifest that's aligning you and whatever you're it is you're trying to manifest it's going to be stronger and it's going to be very much related to you uh moving more and more into this very mature process of emotional integration emotional intelligence emotional self-awareness and that kind of thing you know emotional availability to yourself really mostly and you know then you're more available to other people emotionally see so now we go into the advice and here we're going to combine the hierophant with the devil and and coming under the king of cups so and, and what's challenging you the most here, this is your advice to how most to put together your relation to the higher self is the seven of swords. That's very much speaking of negative thoughts. And the Hierophant here has nothing to do with marriage coming under the ten of swords. The reason why you're ending this energy that has to do with this negative thought process that was going on, probably in 2004, it was probably bad, okay? I think now it's better. That's the important thing. Let me know what, if that's true. Uh, because what this is doing, it's really aligning you. The Hierophant here totally reprimand, rec uh, refers to aligning with your highest self, um, with higher values, uh, not just morality. Um, but, you know, and a lot of what this is about, especially in Taurus, these nodes, um, is values. Is like, what do we really value? And this shows that you're moving really solidly uh, into knowing what it is you value and aligning with what you value. And this is being uh, here played against the devil energy. That could be Pluto and Capricorn at 28 degrees in, in retrograde. And it could also, this could refer to what's opposite the sun. And that's, you know, Scorpio energy. So this is all that shadow stuff, shadow work, all of the darkness here, which a lot of times Taurus doesn't really like because it's Venus energy. And Venus does not like uh, the devil, you know. Venus wants happy, you know, and, and happiness and beauty. You know, you could kind of look at Scorpio in a way as being hell and Taurus in a way as being heaven. And there's your contrast here. Look how heavenly this is and look how hellish that is. Um, but it's this it's this process of moving, you know, and com com coming under the emotions. Um, it's saying uh, don't allow these emotions to, as you connect to your emotions, uh, try to keep them vibing at a higher level. Um, so, you know, mentally you might know if you're vibing at a high level because you're not thinking a negative thought. Um, but with your feelings, you know. Um, like this could be indulging in things like, you know, hatred, resentment, uh, anger, all of the kind of lower vibrational energies. Um, and so it's kind of like a warning that, you know, as much as you're in this, uh, you're not in the Hierophant energy at that higher level. And with the Seven of Swords there, that's all about kind of not slipping back into that energy from the Ten of Swords that you're wanting to let go of here because this again you know it's not lying cheating and stealing here this is uh the energy of really purely negative thinking you know and strategic thinking you know um like you know um well it, it it's really uh, it, it speaks to this is unconditional the hair font and the devil's very conditional so that can be too like uh you know saying things in order to get something it could be even to yourself. It could be the difference between, I remember for years just saying, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that, but never feeling grateful. But I was really trying, 
you know and eventually one day I actually felt grateful and I was like shocked and so it worked you know and with the seven of pinnacles coming over the seven of swords that's very much is kind of what that is it's like something's becoming real now and you're really leaving behind all that negative thinking and becoming a real boy or girl 